Welcome, Flutter Enthusiasts. Welcome back to Widget Wisdom. Today, we're diving deep into SQFlight in Flutter, exploring its features, usage, and best practices. Let's start with the basics. SQFlight is a SQLite plugin for Flutter, designed to simplify interaction with SQLite databases. Now, why SQFlight? SQFlight is a powerful and easy-to-use package written entirely in Dart, making it an ideal choice for local data storage in Flutter applications. To begin using SQFlight in your Flutter project, you'll need to install the package. Now add this package in your pubspec.yaml file. After adding it now, tap on this pub get button so that it will install all the dependency. Now come into this main.dart file. Now here, I've this local database class. In our this class in getting called from my app. Now here create a database variable. And now here add the late, because we will initialize it in the future. Now here create a string variable, as table name and initialize it with, student table because, we are going to store student data. Now here override this init method. And inside this call initialize database. And now create this initialize database method. Now this method is created. And this method is having void a void return type. So remove that void, and add here future void type. And this is a future function so here, also add async and now come in this method. And here create a database path variable. This line retrieves the path to the directory where databases for the app should be stored. Now we need to have our own database path. So for that let's join the above database path with the student underscore database dot db. So this is our database path. And now we are having error on this join part. So for fixing this issue, let's import this path dot dart file from path. Now we need to initialize our databs. So for doing that just write await and then open database. This open database function opens or creates the SQLite database. So here just give it the path of the database. And then define the version of your database. And then define the on create callback. Then this on create callback is called when the database is created for the first time. It takes this database object and the version for it. Inside this callback, our SQL command will be executed to create our this table. And this table will store the three columns. One at automatic generated ID as primary key, student name as string, and student age as int. Now let's create another function for inserting the data into table. So I've named my this function as insert data. And our this function will take two parameters, one is for student name, and second one is student age. Now, our this function is future type so, here add async now in this function, add a wait here and then write database.insert. Now inside this function add the table name, and then add the two columns for, name and age. After this here, we need to give it conflict algorithm. So we want then, when the same data row is available in the table, then we want to replace it. So for doing that just write conflict algorithm dot replace. Now come into this scaffold and give me a minute to create the UI. And one more thing, if you want the code or written tutorial then I'll provide the link in the description and pinned comment also. So you can find all the code and its explanation there. And if you like these videos then please do support me at Patreon. It helps the channel to grow and excite me for making such content for you. Now I've created the UI for this application. Here I'm having insert data, fetch data, update data and delete data button to perform all the CRUD operation. And I've created all these methods for perform the action. Now run the program. And our program is installed successfully. Now let's tap onto this insert data function. And as you can see we have this print statement. So yeah, our insertion of data is working perfectly. Now let's come into this function for fetch the data. So here we just need to query the data from database, and then give it the table name. 
so it will return all the data available in the table. Now our this function is get called from on press method of fetch data. Now let's run the code and now again press the insert data. So one row of data is inserted in the table. Now press the fetch data. So as you can see in the terminal we have all the two rows printed. Now let's add the update functionality. So here come into this update data function. And here add async and then write await database.update. And here we want to update the value of student name. So here inside this update function, first we need to add the table name, in which we want to perform the update action. Now add the value which you want to update, so here add the name, with the updated value. Now add the condition for where you want to update the value. And here I'm having some errors, and I've got the issue, we need to add the curly braces instead of these braces. So my this update method is get called from, on pressed method of update and there I've passed the ID as 1 and name as Jane. In this function. Now again run the app, and now tap on this update function. So our data is updated, now again tap on to this fetch data function, so you can see our name is updated from John to Jane. Now, let's finally do delete functionality. So now come inside this delete data function. And here write await then database.delete and inside this, delete function give the table name from where we want to delete the data, and now add the condition for deletion. And we want to delete the item from ID now again save the program. And now tap onto this delete data button. So our one row is deleted from table, now again tap onto this fetch data, option, and as you can see, in the terminal we have only one element in the table. So yeah, fellow coders that's it for this video. If you like this video, then please, like, share and subscribe with your fellow coders. Thank you. And have a good day.